Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about animals found in zoos. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip to see some really cool animals in zoos around the world. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, learning how to make a monkey puppet and a fun panda bear. Finally, I hope you'll play along as we play Zoo Animal Trivia. Animals, some are amazing and adorable. Others are disgusting or terrifying. Today, I thought it would be fun to visit some zoos around the world that I have really enjoyed. We'll see some of my favorite animals and a few you might never even knew existed. First, let's take a look at some beloved animals we'd see in almost any zoo. Do you love the lanky and lovable giraffe? The tallest land mammal on earth, their legs alone are taller than the average human and their necks are equally matched in length. While their limbs and necks are useful for stretching to reach juicy leaves, they make bending down to drink a tricky endeavor. They have to use a sort of spread eagle stance. Funny, right? Have you ever seen a giraffe stick out its tongue? Not only is it incredibly long, but it's also a dark blue. Looks like it just ate a colored lollipop. And I love how each giraffe has different colored spots. What about elephants, the largest living land mammals? Did you know they've been lumbering around the earth for over 55 million years? They're enormous and intelligent, strong and sociable. They amaze us with their long and flexible noses, large and flapping ears, and loose wrinkly skin. Just like people, elephants love to play and it's so much fun to watch them splash and play in the mud. If all elephants seem the same to you, take a closer look. There are two types of elephants, the African and the Asian. Asian elephants are smaller. Their ears are smaller compared to the large fan-shaped ears of the African. And only male Asian elephants have tusks, while both males and female Africans grow them. Lions are often at the top of any animal list. They're powerful and graceful and have a roar that can be heard from up to five miles away. They're one of the only known cats to live in groups called prides. Often known as the king of the jungle, most lions actually live in the savanna or grasslands of Africa, and just one population of wild forest-dwelling lions remain. These Asiatic lions are smaller, their mane is shorter than African lions, and they're found in the Gur Forest in India. No zoo visit is complete without a little time with the primates. Primates include all lemurs, monkeys, apes, and humans. Chimpanzee, chimpanzees are our closest living relatives and share nearly 99% of our DNA. Humans and chimps are thought to share a common ancestor who lived millions of years ago. Chimpanzees are one of the few animal species that employ tools. They shape and use sticks to retrieve insects. Chimpanzees, more than any other living creature, have helped us to understand there's no sharp line between humans and the rest of the animal kingdom. For our first zoo, I want to start in my hometown, New York City. While each borough has its own zoo, and I visited them all, today I want to take you to the Bronx Zoo. With over 6,000 animals spread over 265 acres, it is one of the world's largest wildlife conservation parks in the United States. But today I thought we wouldn't just see traditional animals. Today we should go on a dinosaur safari, traveling back in time through a wooded area packed with over 40 gigantic animatronic dinosaurs. They aren't real. They roar, brandish their teeth, and swing their tails and claws. The two-acre prehistoric forest chronicles from the Permian period 300 million years ago to the comparatively recent Cretaceous period, which ended about 65 million years ago. Along the way, we'll see dinosaurs in various lifelike poses and scenes, some protecting eggs, foraging for food, and even hunting prey. You can see winged ones and even aquatic ones. Do you see your favorite? I love the two massive 40 feet long Tyrannosaurus rexes. I bet you didn't think we were gonna see a dinosaur in a zoo, did you? Next, we're off to the Smithsonian Zoological Park in Washington, DC. 
one of the most diverse zoos in zoos in the U.S. While there are over 1,800 animals here, today I want us to explore its very special think tank. The Great Ape House provides animals with a choice of how to spend their time, whether inside or outside. The apes have an opportunity to climb trees, rest in a hammock, swing from hanging ropes and fire hoses, engage in enriching activities, and forage for food. They can travel between the great ape house to the think tank along the O line, a 50 foot high suspended cable track that allows them to move. The interactive think tank exhibit is the place to learn about how animals think. Explore, language, socialize, and use tools. You can play tug of war with an orangutan on the orangutan rope pole, and watch out for a shower if the orangutans turn on a mist of water. The think tank provides a variety of activities that the zoo's primates can do to keep them physically and mentally active. They can play with iPads, musical instruments, and even painting. <laughs> Doesn't this look like fun? Next, we're off to the San Diego Zoo in California. It is situated in beautiful Balboa Park and was one of the first zoos to have open-air cageless exhibits. It's home to more than 3,500 animals, including penguins, baby hippos, koalas, gorillas, tigers, rhinos, elephants, mandrills, and more. At first thought, a polar bear in sunny San Diego seems curiously out of place. But at the zoo, you'll discover that polar bears are right at home, and every day is an Arctic summer day. Polar bears are mammals, just like you and me. This means they're warm-blooded, have fur or hair, give birth to live babies, breathe air, and drink milk when they're young. They are vertebrates, meaning they have backbones like we do to support their bodies. They have eyes, ears, a mouth, a nose, and even five toes on each foot. But polar bears are different from us in many ways. They have wide front paws with webbed toes, which they use for steering when they're in the water. They like to swim. And for example, a polar bear can smell seals on the ice up to 20 miles away. They are the largest bear in the world. And when a polar bear grows up, it'll weigh between 440 and 1,700 pounds. That's as much as a small car. I bet you didn't know that polar bears are not actually white. A polar bear's coat has two layers of hair, an outer layer made up of long hollow guard hairs and a soft thick undercoat made up of shorter hair. These guard hairs are mostly transparent or clear and are hollow. But thanks to the air spaces in each hair, all visible light is scattered, making it appear white. Underneath these hairs, their skin is black. Next, we're off to see panda bears in Beijing Zoo, the biggest zoo in China. The zoo was established in 1906 and has grown substantially from its relatively humble beginnings as a home to 12 monkeys, two parrots, and a blind emu. Now it contains 950 species of animals, within its sprawling 219 acres of land. The best exhibit is the giant pandas. Who doesn't love them? Their charming black patches around their eyes and ears and customary pot belly makes them easy to spot. They like to climb trees and they have an extended wrist bone that they use like a thumb to help them grip food. Speaking of food, while classified as a carnivore, in fact, they live on 99% vegetable diet, and their favorite food is bamboo shoots. The giant panda has an insatiable appetite with very strong jaws and teeth, allowing it to crush and chew the bamboo. As a type of grass, it doesn't have a lot of nutrients. It's kind of like eating celery for breakfast, lunch, and dinner so they have to eat a lot of it. Eating over 12 hours a day and pooping on average 40 times a day. Yikes, 
but aren't they adorable? Next, we're off to Singapore, one of my favorite zoos in the world. It has over 2,800 mammals, birds, and reptiles spread over 64 acres in a very lush rainforest. It was one of the first zoos designed to allow animals to roam in spacious landscaped enclosures separated by sneakily hidden moats. Elevated platforms, underwater galleries, and glass observatories allow us to come face to face with its furry and feathered inhabitants. One of the most special features of the zoo is its night safari. When darkness falls on this rainforest and dampness infuses the air, the shutters open at the night safari, welcoming us into a world of nocturnal creatures and their mysterious habitats. The world's first nocturnal wildlife park provides a special and unique way to view many threatened and endangered animals. Because big cats are naturally nocturnal, meaning awake at night, this is the perfect place to take a closer look. Black and white and orange all over, the beautiful striped coat and that powerful mesmerizing gaze make the tiger one of the world's most revered animals. It's a reverence that's mixed with a bit of fear, an appropriate reaction to a large, well-muscled swift hunter with one to two inch long canine teeth, three to four inch long claws and a long tail. This is a critically endangered Malayan tiger. There are only 200 left in the wild. Lions are the only big cats that live in groups called prides. All other big cats live solitary lives with the exception of mothers and cubs. These are South African white lions as a result of a recessive gene and have been extinct in the wild since 1990. Look carefully and you can spot the differences between leopards and jaguars. Leopards from Asia and Africa are comfortable in trees and water and have distinctive densely packed rosette spots. Jaguar spots are similar, but often have a black dot in the center and are the largest cats found on the American continent. They have the strongest bites, twice the strength of a lion. Do you have a favorite of the big cats? Next, we're off to Taronga Zoo. Located 12 minutes by ferry from Sydney Harbor, the zoo is a full Australian experience engaging the eyes with a breathtaking view of the Sydney Harbor and Opera House before getting a close introduction to some of the wildlife of the Aussie outback. Once off the ferry, we ride on Sydney's only cable car. The Sky Safari Tram provides a spectacular view as we head up to the zoo. It's home to some really unusual animals, including baby wombats, a spiny anteater, lizards, frogs, snakes, and this is a cute echidna, a spiny anteater. Have you ever seen a platypus? With its paddle-shaped tail like a beaver, sleek waterproof fur like an otter, and webbed feet like a duck. It's truly a sight to behold. But let's go find the most iconic animals of Australia. Let's start with the koala. While koalas are often referred to as koala bears, I want you to know they are not bears at all. Koalas are actually marsupials, which means they give birth to a highly underdeveloped young that continue to grow in the mother's pouch while feeding on milk. A baby koala called a joey is furless and tiny and spends the first five to seven months in their mom's pouch before emerging. Koalas can sleep between 18 to 20 hours a day, digesting only eucalyptus leaves. Talk about a limited diet. Takes a lot of effort, so napping is required to save energy. They have two opposable thumbs on each hand and foot for extra hold on branches. Last but not least are the kangaroos. Red kangaroos are known for their hopping. They use their powerful hind legs to spring forward. They can clear up to 26 feet in a single hop and can jump six feet in height. This allows them to not only cover a great distance, but they are fast, reaching up to 37 miles per hour. A group of kangaroos are called a mob, and they usually hang out in a family group of 10 animals. Kangaroos are tiny when born, only about the size of a jelly bean. Similar to koalas, a baby kangaroo is called a joey and is carried around in their mother's pouch before venturing out to explore. This one's special as it is a tree kangaroo, they can walk backwards, an essential skill in negotiating branches, and they have special pads on their feet and hands to help with climbing. 
well, it's time for our journey around the world visiting famous zoos to come to an end. Do you have a favorite animal or a favorite zoo? Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about different zoos around the world and today we're going to make two crafts that are some of my favorite animals. One of them is a monkey. We're going to use a paper bag and we're going to make a puppet. And the other one is a really fun polar bear craft. I hope you have fun. For the monkey puppet craft, you will need a brown paper bag, some brown paper for our monkey's ears and mouth and tail, a color for, your, for the inside of your monkey's ears, and I'm using pink, scissors, glue, markers or crayons or something you can draw with, and I'm going to use a pencil so it's easier to draw and cut out my shapes. So now we're going to draw the oval flower monkey's mouth. So we want it to be about this long and then a little bit wider than the paper bag. So I'm going to do it like this. And then we could draw our oval doesn't have to be perfect. Just like this. And now we're gonna cut it out. So our monkey's mouth is gonna go right here a little bit over the folded part. So now we're gonna make our monkey's belly. So you want it to be a little bit under the monkey's mouth and for it to go just like this. So you can hold your brown paper next to your brown paper bag and you can go and draw your oval just like that. So now we're gonna cut out our monkey's ears and tail. So for the ears, you wanna make two. So to make it a little bit faster, we can fold our paper in half. And then you want your monkey's ears just like that. So now we're gonna make the monkey's tail. So, take your brown piece of paper and then we're gonna draw a squiggly line like that. And then back around like this. So now I have my tail cut out and now we're gonna make our pink circles for the ears. So we need two so you can fold your paper in half again. We want to make small little circles so that they can fit inside of the ears. If you want, you can draw them out first, but you don't have to. So first we're going to glue on our monkey's face. So we only want to put a little bit of glue on the top because it's going to hang off of our paper bag. So then you could put it right in the middle above the fold, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna glue on our monkey's belly. So put glue all over it. And then you can glue it on. And now we can glue on our tail. And now, before we glue on the ears, you could put our pink circles on them. Just like that. And now, if you don't want your whole entire pink circle to show, you can put glue on half of the circle. And then you could stick it behind your paper bag just like that, so that it doesn't show the whole entire pink circle and it only shows half of it. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other ear. And now we're gonna draw our monkey's eyes. So first we can draw a big circle like this because we want our monkey's eyes to be big. And then you could draw another one like this, but before you finish it, 
you want to make a little dip and then go back down. And now we're going to color all of this in. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So now I'm going to draw the monkey's face. So I'm going to draw his nose. Now I'm going to draw his big smile. So now you're ma you made your monkey, and now I'm going to show you how it becomes a puppet. So you can put your hand through, and then bend your hands over into the fold, and then you can move its mouth around. And I also made a different one before this, and you can also put your other hand in it, and then they, be they can be friends. You guys can also name your monkeys. For the polar bear craft, you will need two white pieces of paper, one black piece of paper, scissors, and glue. The first step is we need to draw our polar bear. So I'm going to use a pencil so that if I make any mistakes, I can erase them. And first, we're going to draw a shape like that. And now, we're going to draw our polar bear's ears. So on either side, you could draw his ears just like that. And now, you could draw a line connecting them like this. So now you can cut this shape out. So now we're going to make our polar bear's fur. So I said in the beginning that you will need two white pieces of paper, but if you don't and you have just one, you can use the scrap from, you, from when you cut out your polar bear and you can make the fur out of that. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to cut a bunch of little strips for the polar bear's fur so that it becomes 3D. And to make this really fast, you can just cut a bunch of strips across your paper just like this. And they don't have to be perfect. And they can be all different shapes and sizes. So do this all the way across your paper. Okay, so now when you've cut all the way across your paper, now right where the confetti of strips stop. You can cut right across so that they fall off very easily. And this just makes it a little bit faster. Okay. So now I have all of my strips. So now it's time to glue our strips on. So first, you can take your glue and put glue all over your polar bear's face. Just like this. And now you can start putting on all of your strips. Just like it's confetti. And it's going to make it look really cool and 3D. Just like polar bear's fur. So you can put them on on top of each other. And you're going to put them on all over your polar bear. You can also, with your strips, you can glue part of it down just like halfway and then, I mean you put a little bit more glue, but halfway and then you can fold it and do it the other way so that it sticks up just like that. So now I have my fur all glued on and now I'm going to cut out my nose, my eyes, and my mouth. So now I cut out my two circle eyes my nose, and my smile. I cut out a shape like this, and then two little shapes like that for the end of my smile. So first, I'm gonna glue on my eyes, and make sure that you glue, that you put the glue on the actual eye and not on your polar bear, because you don't want the pieces that you glued on for the fur coming off. So you can just put some glue on, and then stick them on like that. And then you can glue on the nose 
like this. And now the smile. So now you can glue on the little ends of the smile on either side, like that. You can also glue your polar bear onto black, a black piece of paper and you can draw something around it. You can use like a white crayon and you can draw some snowflakes so that it looks like a real polar bear in the snow. You can also name your polar bear if you want. I hope you had fun doing these crafts with me. Bye! Welcome to Zoo Animal Trivia. 10 questions, four answers, only one of which is correct. Who's ready to play? Question number one. What is a baby kangaroo called? A, pup, B, Joey, C, cub, or D, full? What are those baby kangaroos called? Answer, please. And the answer is B. Joey. Question number two. What do panda bears like to eat? A. Eucalyptus. B. Meat. C. Bamboo. Or D. Everything. Oh, what do those panda bears like to eat? They sure are cute. And the answer is C. Bamboo. Question number three. Which big cat lives in groups? A. Lion, B. Tiger, C. Leopard, or D. Jaguar. Which of those big cats is the only one that lives in groups? And the answer is A. Lion. They're called prides. Question number four. What animal travels between the great ape house to the think tank? A. Leopards, B. Panda bears, C. Orangutans, or D. Koalas? Answer is C. Orangutans. Question number five. What color are polar bears' hairs? A. White, B. Black, C. Transparent, or D. Yellow? This is kind of tricky. Answer is C, transparent. Our hairs are mostly transparent or clear and are hollow. But thanks to the air spaces in each hair, all visible light is scattered, making it appear white. Question number six, with such a long neck and long legs, how does the giraffe drink water? A, it kneels down. B, it spreads its front legs. C, its necks can reach down. Or D, it gets water from leaves. Have you ever seen a giraffe try to drink water? And the answer is it spreads its front legs. Question number seven. Which of the following is true of tigers? They are the smallest of the big cats. They're the only cat with stripes and no spots. They're the only big cats that can swim or all of the above. Answers, please. And the answer is B. They're the only big cat with stripes and no spots. Question number eight. What size is a baby koala? Is it A, a jelly bean, B, a watermelon, C, an apple, or D, a beach ball? Hmm. How big is a baby koala when it's first born? And the answer is A, jelly bean. Question number nine. What part of the African elephant is larger than the Asian elephant? Is it A, the trunk? B, the feet, C, the ear, or D, the mouth. Can you tell them apart? And the answer is C, ear. The last and final question. Question number 10. Which animal is closest to humans? A, dolphin, B, elephants, C, giant panda, or D, chimpanzee? Some of them are very smart. And the answer is D, chimpanzee. I hope you played along. How many did you get right? I hope and look forward to seeing you next time.